the story. I give God the glory and I praise God for going through those difficult times because if I hadn't I would not perhaps been able to engage in the ministry or fully appreciate the ministry that he's giving me in my life now and to be able to work with the women at the level that I have been able to I mean we've been able to work with the women in Fiji help them off the streets the domestic violence survivors Good day I'm Jimmy Colfax welcome to the story Well today we have the conclusion of our four part conversation with human rights lawyer Sabrina Sharma who's been sharing her life journey with us As we've heard previously Sabrina Sharma was born in the UK and spent her childhood growing up in Fiji and Australia in an Islamic family She eventually became a Christian and is now a human rights lawyer who God has used to help many survivors of domestic violence Last time Sabrina shared how she married a pastor in Fiji and how her strict Muslim father eventually softened towards him. Today we'll hear what happened next as Sabrina shares more of her story. And parents because of the adult themes that will be discussed, today's program is not recommended for young children. Once again, Sabrina Sharma's chatting with Eric Scadabo. Okay, so you married the man who ticked all the boxes that you wrote out in your legal essay, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, in my prayerful submissions to God. <laughs> and he's got that sense of humor, I'll tell you that. I, I think God was probably thinking, well, it takes all kinds. <laughs> <laughs> so after this uh, this beautiful we had a private uh, wedding ceremony in uh, in Fiji. Uh, mm-hmm. We had uh, some from the media who wanted to to cover the wedding, but um, we said no. It's going to be as private as possible. Mm-hmm. And after the 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 wedding, we um, accepted invitations to continue our ministry work across Fiji. I was invited to share testimony. Jonathan was invited to preach. Mm-hmm. So we began just traveling around Fiji, teaching and preaching while I was advocating for the oppressed in the magistrate's court in the high court and uh, we just kept that going eventually we opened up a bible college which oh, wow. allowed Jonathan to teach and train people in Nandi and um, I had a law firm there as well and things were going great until god redirected our paths oh what happened well what well, <laughs> the uh, the coronavirus brought about a lot of uh, restrictions and rules mm-hmm. in Fiji. Um, Fiji went into lockdown. Mm-hmm. And when it went into lockdown, Nandi, where we were staying, um, Nandi went into extreme lockdown. So you could not enter Nandi, you could not leave Nandi. It was the same for Suva. Mm-hmm. And we weren't working. We were just confined to, to home. Uh, we could barely get groceries and things. And... In all of this, while all of this was happening, God again spoke to me at one point during prayer. Mm-hmm. And this really scared me when he said this. He said, get ready to leave the country. You have to start packing your things and selling things off. Oh, that scared me because mm-hmm. we'd made a life in Fiji. Yeah. I was, you know, guest speaking at all these events and, and yeah. in working in community engagements, I was working with the rural women. I, I love that work. And now suddenly God's saying, get ready to leave. And I said, I remember saying, oh, Lord, don't do this, please. We can't go. That We love it here. Hmm. Jonathan loves it here. I love it here. And how are we going to do this? And you, you really need to let me know what's going on here. But he wouldn't. And again, it came to be like the story of Moses. You know, when, when God found Moses and spoke to Moses and Moses doubted his his calling and then God had to reassure him. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, but he couldn't show Moses what was happening up ahead. If Moses had seen it, well, where's that that f- growth in faith? Mm-hmm. How are we, we molded to, to grow in our faith and in our spirit to trust in him? So this really scared me. And I mm-hmm. thought, no, no, Sabrina. God has always, always proven himself. In fact, he's never, ever, ever let me down. He's not going to let me down. But I've, I've got to talk to Jonathan about this. So I did. I spoke to Jonathan. I said, this is what God said. 
how are things on your end <laughs> prayerfully? Mm -hmm. And he said, oh, yes, yes, uh, God's mentioned that to me. And I said, oh, oh well, really? <laughs> how are you so blasé about this? <laughs> <laughs> he sounds you know, like a laid back guy. <laughs> oh, he's, um, you know, God's, God's really given him an amazing gift when he teaches and preaches. Mm -hmm. This guy is fearless. He he's had people come up and mock him for his faith. He's had people put him down for because the name Sharma, it comes from the highest caste of the Hindu faith. The, the Brahmins have mm. that name. Mm -hmm. And so what an insult it is to followers of Hinduism and with all due respect to anyone from the Hindu faith, mm -hmm. um, what an insult it is to them to have a, a name like Sharma. Mm. Oh, so he's experiencing opposition. Yes, he's mm. he's disloyal too. Oh, okay. Well, you guys can identify with each other. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Another common ground. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so he was very. Um, he's had people mock him and say things to his to his face about his faith, and he just says, you know, he just blesses them, and mm. he continues to graciously let them know about who Christ is, and he's he's very. Very good like that. So when I'm sharing this this calling, he was very calm. Mm. And he said, yes, well, if that's what, you know, what God's calling us to do, we're going to have to obey the call of God. And I thought, oh, boy, uh, it's no wonder we came together because he's the calmer one in this. You, know? <laughs> <laughs> you kind of balance and, um, each other out, it sounds like. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um we began, you know, selling up our, our things, our possessions, and uh, slowly putting our car up on the market for sale and things. And I thought, mm -hmm. hang on, how on earth are we going to leave Fiji with the international border closed? So nobody can yeah. fly into the country, nobody can fly out of the country, mm -hmm. and God's saying, oh, we're just going to, you know, fly out of here. Um, not just that, he was, he was showing me Australia to return back to Australia. So I rang the Australian High Commission. And had a conversation with a chap there, and I said, "Look, I'm just inquiring if you've got any flights that you may be aware of." And mm -hmm. and the chap said, "No, there are no flights. Are you not aware that the international border is closed? So there are no flights coming in, no flights going out. Can you not waste my time?" <laughs> <laughs> and I said, "Oh, I'm really sorry." I said, um, "There's going to be a flight coming up at some point. So would you be able to let me know?" And he said. What makes you think a flight's going to come up? Who told you that? And I said, God. Huh. And I think he was trying to cover the phone, but mm. he didn't succeed because I heard what he said to the woman beside him, who I later found out was named um, Claire. And he, he said to her, there's a crazy woman on the phone. Huh. And, you know, loony woman talking about a flight, but there's no flights. There's the international things on lockdown and whatnot. And she said, Oh, oh, just let her know. We will advise you accordingly. <laughs> hmm. And I can hear this whole conversation. Yeah, yeah. And so he come on the line and said, ma'am, we'll advise you accordingly. I said, yeah, I heard that. Okay. <laughs> um, here's my number. Gave him my number. Gave him my email. Um, we closed that call. Again, a couple of days later, God saying it again. You you're about to leave for Australia. Continue to sell your things. And I thought, hmm. Oh gosh, I need to call these people again. So I made a second call to the High Commission. The same thing. He said, Oh, the crazy woman again. Here she is again. Here she is again. Now, it was only a few days after that. Diana, a friend of mine who happened to be working for Fiji Airways, she's she was in the human resources department of Fiji Airways. She sent me a message on Facebook. She said, Sabrina, I know we haven't touched base in a few months. And uh, I've been meaning to catch up with you. She said, but um, I was sort of praying and I'm really restless. I need to share something with you. And I said, okay. I said, if this has got to do with a, a legal matter, I need you to email me about this because we need to keep things on the record. And she said, mm -hmm. I don't know. She said, I was praying and I don't know. I think the Holy Spirit's trying to tell me something. And I just felt like I have to say this to you, but I don't know why. And I said, well, what is it that you need to say? She said, well, Fiji Airways has created a special flight to Australia for Australians to leave Fiji and return oh. home. Oh, there is a way. Yes. And I said, are you, are you kidding me? She said, no. <laughs> she said, a special flight's been created and it's only a minimal number of passengers that are going to be getting on it. And it's in collaboration with the Australian High Commission. So if, you, if you're going to book it, you can't go through us. You have to go through the Australian High Commission. Mm-hmm. 
And she said, I don't know why I have to tell you that. And I said, I know why. I said, Dana, I'm going to be in touch with you shortly, okay? So I rang the Australian High Commission, got the chap again. I said, hi, it's me, the uh, crazy woman. And um, <laughs> <laughs> and he said, ah, now, did you know about this flight? I said, well, yeah, God, you know. And he said, no. Did you know some other way? I said, no, no, I didn't know some other way. I said, I said I'm, you know, I pray a lot and God spoke to me and he told me about this flight. He said, right, so what do you want? <laughs> and I, thought, I said, um, mate, what I'd like is to get on that flight. How do we do this? Because I understand there's a process. And he said, well, what makes you think you want to get on it? He said, there are 3,000 expat Australians in the country trying to get onto this flight. And I said, well, I've been led to believe by God that we're going to get on it. Um, so I'd appreciate knowing what the process is. He said, well, just give us your names and put your names down. And we did that. Um, now, we've got a boy. We've got a son mm -hmm. named Jason. Mm -hmm. And Jason is an Australian citizen. He was born in Australia. Mm -hmm. That's all I can say about the child. On record, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, it just so happened, because of all the lockdowns happening, we could not renew Jason's Australian passport. So it was it was only a few months expired, but still expired. Mm -hmm. And so the chap said, um, we can fly you out, but Jason can't travel with you, and neither can Jonathan, because Jonathan's not an Australian citizen, and this special flight is only for Australian citizens to return home or someone with a valid um, residency visa. Mm -hmm. And Jono, Jono and I are both British, but, but Jono had only British and Fijian. Mm -hmm. And Jason's got an expired passport. And so this guy's telling me that we can't get on. So that's another challenge. Mm -hmm. And so I said, look, please just put our names down and we'll, we'll pay for the flights. We'll deal with this matter at the airport, he said, oh, yeah, you'll be dealing with it because the guy from the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade is going to be there and you can't get past him. Hmm. I said, just put our names down. We'll sort it out when we get there. Um, we only found out two days before our flight that we were on that flight. Oh, wow. And a day prior to the flight, uh, the Australian High Commission rang me and said, just for record purposes, can you lodge a – a spousal visa application with the High Commission and we'll see what happens. And I said, are you kidding me? I said, those those applications take months to process. Mm. And well, in my exposure and experience, they've taken months to process. I said, mm. you're asking me two days before the flight to lodge this. And he said, well, we'll see how it goes. They're very relaxed about this. And Jonathan's there in prayer mode going, yep, God's got this, God's got this. And I said, yes, but the legalities, how do I do the legalities? And um, – Submitted the visa application. 24 hours later, the visa was granted. Oh, wow. This, this does not happen. Yeah. And we thought, wow, one challenge after another is just being swept out of the way. Yeah. So then we got to the airport. Now I'm standing at the airport, the DFAT guy standing there, and he's looking straight at my face. He's looked over at Jason. He's looked over at Jonathan, and he said, well, these two can't travel with you. And I said, what, because they're not Australian citizens, or what's the story? And he said, well, we're not accepting visitors and Jonathan's just on a visitor spousal visa. And he said, and as for your son, there is no valid passport for him. So I asked Jonathan to step aside and just take Jason just slightly away from where I was. And I said, right, now you listen to me. <laughs> this document here, and I showed Jason's birth certificate. I said, this document here is an identification particular which proves that our son is an Australian subject. If you refuse him his legal right of entry into Australia, you and I are going to be facing a lawsuit. Mm -mm. And I held my ground. They shouldn't have messed with a lawyer. Well, <laughs> well, here's what happened. He was sort of staring at me. It was like the battle of the gazes here. Huh. Just staring, staring at me and had this, this real poker face expression. And um, the lovely Fiji Airways lady right beside him nudged him and she said, you need to let them go. That's that human rights lawyer. She's going to stage a peace protest if you don't let them go. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, and she said, we can't have the publicity. It's going to get political. <laughs> so 
he sort of looked back at her, looked at me, and I'm holding my ground. I just did not budge. And he said, right, all three of you can go. You're listening to The Story. Today, once again, human rights lawyer Sabrina Sharma is sharing her life journey. We'll hear more of her story, including how the Lord has been using her in Australia when we return. The Story. 